bittersweet victory. As Discovery reaches the International Space Station, NASA grounds its fleet. Heartbreak. With shuttle flights halted, where does that leave Canada's space program? Stepping down, the head of the NHL Players Union resigns. You're watching Global News Calgary with Nirmala Naidu and Tony Tai. It has been a day of triumph and fear at NASA. The shuttle Discovery successfully docked with the International Space Station today. But problems with the shuttle after Tuesday's launch had engineers concerned its return could be jeopardized. Tonight, however, they're confident the crew will be safe. Unfortunately, as Jay Gray reports, the same can't be said for future missions. This is Mission Control Houston at a mission. An early morning damage scan of Discovery's vital re-entry protection tiles provided much needed good news for NASA and the crew of shuttle Discovery. Um, the initial report was that it, it looks extremely good and uh, we don't have uh, anything to worry about on Discovery. You get an excellent view. Commander Eileen Collins worked the spacecraft through a slow backflip before docking with the International Space Station. That maneuver gave engineers an up-close look at the underside of Discovery with the help of high-powered cameras. You can clearly make out the body flap, the elevons, etc. Looks tremendous. Your Commander Eileen. Collins uh, prepares to open the hatch into the After a flawless Space docking station. moments later, the Discovery crew delivered Central crucial supplies to astronauts on board the space station. But it's a much different picture when it comes to the future the, uh, of shuttle flight. Ice. New video from NASA shows another huge piece of debris or ice falling away from Discovery's external fuel tank just before it fell into the ocean. After two and a half years of what have turned out to be futile redesign and repair attempts, engineers now must again focus on finding a way to stop insulating foam from peeling away from the tank. We are treating this extremely seriously and, uh, and like we've said, is, is we're going to go fix this before we go fly. But the lingering problem now has some questioning whether it may be time to retire the aging Altitude shuttle fleet. Go for discovery. NASA engineers believe they can find a fix to the debris problem, and they say it's vital the shuttles fly again. Well, NASA's decision to ground the fleet has a direct effect on the Canadian space industry. It's a billion-dollar industry, with Ontario's MDS providing the shuttle's very important robotic Canadarm. A global tree Sears has more now on the Canadian impact closing at one tenth of a foot per second maintaining her approach until they fix it we're not flying again it's a statement by nasa officials in houston that was heard loud and clear on this side of the border canada's space industry is worth 2.4 billion dollars annually it involves several dozen companies and accounts for 8,000 jobs this is the same configuration as what we have there mda based in brampton is certainly the most prominent of those companies mda created the canadarm and most recently the inspection boom that has enabled discovery astronauts to check their spacecraft for damage to critical heat shields. So Without this system, they couldn't have they couldn't have flown. Surprisingly, the news that NASA has grounded future shuttle flights has not raised any alarm at the company, despite the fact NASA accounts for a significant portion of its business. I'm not going to speculate when they'll fly. I, I my belief is they'll fly sooner rather than later. They're not going to be on the ground long. What's more, a suspended shuttle program does not mean a stoppage at work at MDA. The company has an ongoing contract with NASA to further develop Canadarm's capabilities. Then there's robotic systems for the International Space Station and NASA's next generation shuttle. I mean, we've got a good reputation, we've got a good... Uh a really good bunch of engineers here, and um, this is what they do best. But it's this mission that everyone is paying their closest attention to now. With further shuttle flights grounded, the push is to get Discovery safely back on the ground. This is Global's Therese Sears reporting. Now, the next shuttle mission was supposed to go up in September. A Canadian astronaut, Steve McLean, was scheduled to fly to space in February, and Dave Williams after him. There were some frightening moments for transit riders in Toronto today. Police ordered subways stopped after receiving a suspicious phone call. And as Minaria reports, passengers at two stations were told to clear out. This is the payphone from which someone placed a call this morning, warning that a bomb hidden in the subway system would explode exactly at 10.30. The unspecified threat uh, was phoned in uh, to the to a Toronto newspaper and then relayed across to the to TTC and the police. The phone booth was just steps from Sherburne Station, the apparent focus of the investigation. 
acting immediately. Police evacuated it along with the nearby Young Bloor station. Half an hour after the call, police had shut down and suspended service on the east-west line between St. George and Chester and the commuter critical north-south line between Union and Eglinton. Shuttle buses were called in to transport passengers, but tension and frustration were mounting as the closure continued for about an hour. The wheels were set in motion with the canine unit called in to sniff around and 100 officers dispatched to every station on the Young and Bloor lines to search for suspicious packages. As soon as the TTC learned of the threat, they made announcements on the PA system to warn passengers. But those who were on the subway platform at the time say the messages were both vague and difficult to understand. The, the announcements coming on, you couldn't hear. But their public service announcements about not stepping near the, the, the gap or whatever, we could hear that clearly, but we couldn't hear any information. So that kind of left me with a bit of a wondering, like, well, what if something really is going on and we're all standing down here? The call that created panic and chaos for thousands of commuters turned out to be a yes, hoax. Yes, yeah, but police yeah, were not apologetic folks. about disrupting uh, service. But everything worked very smoothly. All units uh, involved in conjunction came together as we've uh, put our training to good use and uh, everything worked out fine. Still, Here Mayor David there. Miller says there's cause for concern. I, I, I am uh, concerned about copycats. That's, uh, I think, something that should concern all of us. Um, and, you know, we've got an excellent police service in this city and uh, if people do do these kinds of things, they're going to get caught. Caught in an age when technology can not just be used as a weapon of terror, but used to catch those who attempt to terrorize a city. This is Global's Mina re-reporting. And right now the system is back running normally and commuters are heading home this hour. Calgary-based WestJet is back in the black, although its profits are not what they once were. After six months of losses, WestJet turned a modest profit of $2.3 million in the second quarter. But that's down from $7.5 million just a year ago. Revenues are up, though, and WestJet CEO says employees did a great job of containing costs. I think it's remarkable that we've, we've achieved what we've achieved, quite frankly, because uh, it's not easy. You think about our cost, 20% of our costs are controllable, 80% are uncontrollable. So what, what efficiencies we build can only be built into that 20%. That's uh, and, uh, our people have done an amazing job at, at, at reducing costs. But. Beto says a big reason for the decline in profits is fuel costs, which have shot up 29% from the same time last year. They say it will cause serious social problems in their community, and today some First Nations elders stopped a planned groundbreaking for a casino. The $33 million project is proposed for the Stony Nakoda First Nations, and that's about 55 kilometers west of Calgary. About a dozen of the nation's elders and their supporters gathered on the highway, forcing dignitaries, including the Premier, from holding the groundbreaking ceremony. Now, despite the protests, the project manager says construction will proceed. We will hear from him and from tribal leaders ahead at 6. Well, I know the long weekend is approaching. Yeah. You, for one person, uh, has an extra day or two off, I believe, don't mm -hmm. you? Yep. Uh, most people obviously hoping for some nice weather. Yes. We'll check in with Jimmy Hughes yeah. and see if he can accommodate those people. Jimmy? Well, absolutely. We've got a tremendous weekend, but what is imminent here is you might need the umbrella. We've got some sprinkles here. Not enough that I have to open it. I can brave these little sprinkles, but we do have severe thunderstorm warnings in the district, currently at 24 degrees, and here's your warnings right now. Calgary, High River, Okotoks, Bragg Creek, Slave Lake, and Athabasca, and watches through a lot of the rest of central and eastern Alberta from Spruce Grove, south of Clarice Home, and east of the Saskatchewan border. We've had reports uh, unconfirmed of funnel clouds and some rather large hail. I've got the details telling you exactly how this should unfold in just a few moments. You better get your raincoat there, Jimmy. I got the brilliant. Yeah. All right, thanks Thank a you. lot. Well, we are heading into another long weekend, and it could be deadly on Alberta roads. At 543, holiday warning. Rescue workers team up with the AMA to help save lives. At 553, bowing out, Bob Goodenow resigns as head of the NHL Players Union. That's ahead in sports. And then building energy-efficient homes. Some Calgary houses are fueled by only the sun and wind. The story coming up later in the show. These things are going up around the city because with every hot day we have, the risk for West Nile virus goes up. I'm Mia Sosiak. I'll have more ahead.